Welcome, my dear friends. So, welcome to chapter number one, unit B. So, here we are going to see the five process group and the ten knowledge areas of PNB. So, what are this five process group and what are the ten knowledge areas? So, to refer this, the most important chart in PNB. So, I call it as a forty marks magic mantra, and that is nothing but page number sixty one of PNB. So, remember this. If you remember this chart very well. You can minimum score forty marks in your examination, and how? This I will take you to the next session when we talk about the exam preparation on PM. <clears throat> Now, what are this process groups and knowledge areas? So first we see there are this five process groups: initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and control, and closing. And how do you remember them? Very very simple. I P E C C. Where I stands for the initiation, P stands for the planning, E stands for the execution, C stands for monitoring and control, and the last C stands for closing. Now, what happens at the time of initiation? So we have already seen in the unit A. At time of initiation, we create a project charter. So we, in the sense, what a project manager along with the sponsor creates the project charter. But the charter has been authorized and approved only by the project sponsors. So he is the only one who can authorize this charter and give this charter to you, and you create your project management plan. At the planning stage, we, as in the project managers, we will create the project management plan. So what is a project management plan? It's a detailed plan. It's a collection of all the knowledge areas. It is a collection of all component management plans, and together this is called as project management plan. So we develop this plan, a detailed plan, and based on this plan, we are going to implement this plan. <clears throat> and that is nothing but the third process group. That is nothing but execution. So at the time of execution, we are going to just blindly follow our plan and implement in our projects. So here, the implementers are who? Are the entire project team. So the entire project team, along with the project manager, we all are going to implement this project and make sure that the project is successful. Monitoring and control. So this is a point which is nothing but a milestone, a point where I am going to cross check whether everything is right as per my plan or not. So let's we have taken an example of Bank of America. We are creating a banking portal for them. So in the twelve years, twelve uh, months project, one year project. We are going to have four different milestones. The first milestone will come after three months. The second milestone will come after six months. The third milestone will come after nine months, and the fourth milestone will come after twelve months, which is the success of the project. So, at the first milestone, after three months, I will have monitoring and control, where I am going to cross check has everything gone smoothly as per my initial plan, which means as per my project management plan, right? And then, in the closing phase, we are going to close the project, or we are going to close the phase of the project. Now, when I say close the project, close the phase of the project, it means because sometimes at the time of closing, I might have a very big project, something which is of three line, three years, or let's say ten years. So, this is a hypothetical example. So, let's assume I have a three years project, but this project I am going to implement it phase wise. So again, the same example, Bank of America. I am going to implement the banking portal of for Bank of America worldwide. So how much time do you think it will take? Okay, three years. So we will take three years to implement this portal worldwide. But shall I wait for three years to launch my portal? Not really. So at phase one, what I am going to do? I am going to launch this portal in the American zone. Phase two, I will take the European zone. And phase three, I will take Asia and others. So what have I done? I have created three phases of my project, and each phase is acting like a project here. And that is why I say, at the closing process group, either it is close of a project or close of a phase. We are not going to anyway see this in detail in the chapter number four, where we will study integration. Now, <clears throat> going to the next topic, how to remember this ten knowledge areas. So seems to be very difficult, but not actually. It is very very simple. So let's see how do you remember this 
10 knowledge areas. So for this, I will give you a quick small rhyme because we are very good at remembering the rhymes, poems, right from the school ages, right? So now let's see a quick rhyme to remember this 10 knowledge areas. I saw two children quietly having coffee, reading poetry and songs. So now I can remember this. So I saw two children quietly having coffee, reading the poetries and songs. Now what does it signify? Here I stands for integration, which is the first knowledge area. S stands for scope. P stands for time. C stands for cost. Q stands for quality, H stands for human resource, C stands for communication, R stands for risk, P stands for procurement and S stands for stakeholders. <coughs> now again, when you read PM book or when you refer Rita Mulkheim as a book, they have mentioned in the first chapter, when you are studying PMP, when you are appearing for the PMP exam, think from a big picture perspective. <clears throat> don't think of a project of 5 days or 10 days. Okay, because in 5 days we don't even have time to implement this rigorous plans. We don't have time to follow all these knowledge areas. So think from a big perspective. Assume you are handling 200 people organization. So 200 people in your project. You have 10 team managers under you. This two, 200 team members will have conflicts, issues, risks, etc, etc, etc. Assume that your project timeline is one year. Assume there are a lot of risks in your project. Assume there are multiple objectives and a detailed scope of your project. And to handle all of this, what do we need is what? We need this, this 10 knowledge areas. If we don't have this 10 knowledge areas, we will not be able to successfully implement the project. <coughs> Now what are the knowledge areas? Let's first start with scope. So when I say scope, I need to have a detailed scope of my project. Now what do I mean by scope? Again, going back to my Bank of America example, I am an IT company, I have taken a project from Bank of America. And I am going to implement a banking portal for this client. So what is the scope of my project? The deliverables that I am going to give through my banking portal. So the banking functionality, the credit card payment functionality, the statement functionality, the fund transfer functionality. So all these functionalities that I'm going to build is going to be the part of my scope. And I will deliver only things that are mentioned in my scope. Not a single piece less, not a single piece more. And as per PMBOK, so just to highlight here, when I say scope, there's something called as in scope and out scope. If my scope is A, B and C, I have to implement A, B and C. And if I deliver something more, A, B, C, and I give D a little bit free of cost to the customers. Just to please my customer, I give an additional scope, D. So my customer is very happy. But as per PMBOK, as per PMI, this is called as gold plating. And it is strictly forbidden and not allowed in your projects. The reason is, once you give something free to your customer, he will not value that product. And next time, every time you will ask something free. Right? That's what happens in the real life projects. Now, the other hand. My customer has told me A, B, C is the scope. And I delivered A, B and C minus. Something less than what was committed. Again, not allowed. It is strictly forbidden. I should not deliver something less to my customer. And when I deliver something less to my customer, this is termed as scope creep. And scope creep is also strictly forward as per PMI and it is unethical. Because this time, you have caused a loss to your customer. You have committed your customer, you are going to deliver it and you have not delivered it. So in scope management, we will see what is in scope and out scope when we go in detail in that chapter. Plus, we'll also see gold plating and we'll also see scope curve. 
the next knowledge area is time time is very very important we say time is money right so even in our projects we say time is money so when we say time management we have to make sure that every project is completed as per the schedule that i've completed to my committed to my customer and who gives this initial schedule my project charter which means my sponsor is going to give me this initial schedule and i as a pm have to make sure i have to complete everything as per the schedule so when we go in schedule management we will discuss more in detail what to do when the schedule i cannot manage within the committed time so there are certain ways out there are certain tools and techniques which pmi is going to recommend me which will help me to make sure i achieve everything as per the schedule next cost management most important right everybody of us we are cost conscious and we have to make sure our project is done within the cost and what does this cost mean i have to deliver the project within the cost baseline given by my sponsor so initial there is a high level cost or to frame it rightly i would say a high level budget given to be my sponsor so it is given by my sponsor and based on this high level budget i am going to set the cost baseline an ideal cost in which i should deliver this project and that will study in the knowledge area cost management the next is quality before this before we go to quality the first scope which is the most important knowledge area second is time or we call it schedule management and cost management this three are called as triple constraints triple constraints of project management and why do we call them triple constraints the reason is because this three are the most important constraints in projects if i don't manage this triple constraints rightly what will happen my project can be endangered and then in the center so normally when we say triple constraints it's nothing but a triangle which has three corners which has scope time and cost management and in the center we will have quality management so we say quality is in the center we have to deliver the project within the required quality and when i say quality it should be fit for purpose and also fit for use human resource because as we have assumed we have 200 people project organization my project team size is 200 people to manage them there is going to be a lot of conflicts a lot of fights egos attitudes and to manage all this resources rightly i need human ma resource management skills so conflict management skills leadership traits so okay so all this traits and leadership skills we are going to learn in the knowledge area human resource management next is communication because we have lot of stakeholders because we have customers end users 200 people organization team managers team members to communicate with them we need a common protocol <clears throat> we need certain guidelines we need certain tools and techniques and where will we learn this we are going to learn them in communication management knowledge area right now when we say that we have a big project 3 years big project right divided into three phases we have 200 people organization we have multiple stakeholders multiple customers multiple end users there are some possibilities of risk and risk are again as i say risk is not negative risk can be positive risk can be negative so for this we need risk management knowledge area to control all the risk and make sure that we get benefited in our project the next is procurement because we are managing this software implementation for bank of america can we do everything by our own not really let's say data collection i had offshore it to some other company so let's say data collection i will give it to ac nelson so ac nelson is going to do the data collection for me maybe the reporting part i will give it to some third party and i am just going to implement the banking portal so when i am going to interact with the vendors i need to have some protocols certain policies certain guidelines certain plan in place how to take a vendor how to sign up a vendor how to make the payments how to check with the deliverables and for this i will study in procurement management knowledge and last but not the least stakeholders so who are the stakeholders 
anyone and everyone who are involved in my project positively or negatively they are my stakeholders so someone who can impact my project someone who might get impacted in my project they are nothing but the stakeholders and how to manage all the stakeholders rightly this we are going to study in the stakeholder management knowledge area and the first knowledge area which we have seen was nothing but integration so integration is what it is collaboration of all this knowledge areas right from the scope management to the stakeholders and as a project manager it is my responsibility that i have to integrate all this knowledge areas together and that's why in pm book you will see this term a project manager is nothing but a project integrator because we have to club all this knowledge areas together we have to work hand in hand with all this knowledge areas and we have to make sure that the project is succeeded and that is why we have this 10 knowledge areas in pm book page number 61 thank you <coughs>